Volvo will be chronicled in the annals of motoring history as a brand that staged one of the most spectacular reinventions. The Swedish manufacturer has succeeded in shedding the beige hues that once defined their identity. Offerings such as the V40 have attracted a more youthful audience, and the lauded new XC90 boasts a well-stocked trophy cabinet. Proof that the automaker can give the mainstream alternatives a run for their Euro. In the large luxury sedan segment, however, Volvo never got the acclaim they might have hoped for from South African buyers. Models like the S80 come to mind. Bland, boring and probably named for the aggregate age of the car's buyers. Volvo is adamant that their new flagship saloon, the S90, will do a better job this time around. So adamant that they invited us to Malaga, Spain to try the newcomer out. And in the interests of consumer journalism, we just couldn't decline. And we said that it shall be unique for the customer, and that the uniqueness we create by the design to, to really have a really good looking car that doesn't look like the other ones. Uh, the other one is the HMI, as I mentioned, the connectivity. We understand the customer. The customer would like to have all the functionality, but not have that tricky, all, all these knobs, etc. So we make it easy. And as I said, last but not least, uh, the safety offer that we are doing right now. For example, the pilot assist that we are, that we are having a standard all over the world right now. From a design point of view, things seem promising. The bold frontal area derives a number of cues seen on the bigger XC90, with that imposing grille and those LED lights resembling the hammer wielded by Thor. Using my most posh telephone voice, I would describe it as austere, elegant and sophisticated. The swanky Swede cuts a dazzling profile from the side too. No doubt from these angles, it will offer a touch of distinction to the forgettable styling templates offered by some peers in this segment. That means you, Mercedes-Benz E-Class. Things are decidedly less inspiring at the hindquarters though, where the whole thing culminates into a nondescript and altogether unremarkable rear end. We do have all the proportions that we need from a, from a platform perspective. We do have the chassis uh, that we really need with double wishbone uh, in the front. We have the performance uh, in, in our power plane. And I would say, not first but not least, the design. It's a very good looking car. Being a Volvo, the safety aspect is a big deal. Then again, it is 2016 and virtually every car out there has a 5-star Euro in-cap rating. But they have gone just a little further, offering a host of systems as standard to prevent a crash. This includes large animal detection, a feature more relevant to Scandinavian countries where stray elks are a common thing, but it should also be handy when navigating around unfriendly Western Cape cyclists. You also get run-off road mitigation in addition to the city safety autonomous braking function, both nicely demonstrated by the visuals on screen. So Volvo's current crop of cars all have a similar texture to them. They're very comforting and soothing and costly and all the rest. And Volvo seems to have shunned this whole idea of emulating the sportiness of their German competitors. It might not be as engaging or as plugged in as a Jaguar XF, but it is still quite a competent thing on the road. Volvo describes the whole experience as relaxed confidence. And yeah, I mean, when you drive the thing, you can see what they're on about. seems to work for them. Volvo cars are really nice to drive. I mean, this is superb. The suspension's great at filtering out road imperfections. The steering's quite confident and sure fitted and overall, it's a really great companion. I'm really impressed by the ride quality. 
Right now we're driving over surfaces that are less than ideal with mid-corner bumps and undulations and it's taking it in its stride. When the S90 arrives in South Africa later this year, it will be offered in front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive guises with a similar engine range to the XC90, all of them four-cylinder units. Buyers can also expect a T8 twin-engine hybrid version as well as the sexier R-design variant. Diesel D5 derivative is also very clever. It features something the Volvo calls Power Pulse, designed to eliminate lag. When the driver uh, would like to have immediate response as a takeoff or overtake, uh, we spools up the compressor with the compressed air, getting rid of turbo lag in the diesel engine. So you get a very instant and direct response in the car with the power pulse system. Here's how it works. The compressor draws air from the air box and stores it in a tank. When you put the right pedal down, a valve opens and a blast of pressurized air goes to the cylinders, delivering a momentary boost before the turbochargers spool up and do their thing. Other clever items include the pilot assist system, which facilitates semi-autonomous driving at speeds of up to 130 km an hour in conditions where road markings are clear. And this piece of kit will be standard right across the range when the model arrives on local shores. So to summarize, the Volvo S90 is an assuring thing to pilot. It's not going to get your heart rate up, but it's not going to increase your blood pressure either. On the inside, the S90 delivers what one expects from a Volvo cabin. The seats are worth noting. They are wonderfully snug, and settling into them is akin to getting a warm hug on a wintry day. Quality materials abound, and there is an air of solidity to things. Naturally, the designer sought to keep things minimalistic. You get this tablet-like screen as your interface. First seen on the XC90, the system seems to divide opinion. Some, like us, find navigating through the plethora of menus to be a fiddly affair, especially while on the move. But reverting to a traditional setup with regular switch gear seems unlikely, so best get used to it. Impressive value is an aspect that Volvo has shown an outstanding commitment to. I mean, when it comes to their higher echelon offerings, everything is standard. And you can expect much of the same with the new S90. Exact pricing is yet to be confirmed, but the manufacturer says that it will be positioned between the 600,000 Rand to 900,000 Rand range. So first impressions of the new Volvo S90 are positive. There are no glaring deficiencies and overall, it's a really good car. It's certainly more characterful and less dour than the manufacturer's previous attempts at the genre. So before we say sayonara to Spain, we should talk about the model that we're not getting. This is the gorgeous V90, and because you, South Africa, don't buy wagons, it's not coming to our market, which is a pity because just look at it, so graceful and elegant, and of course, heaps of space. So let's see if we can maybe change your mind and perceptions about wagons. The big thing is, of course, the space. And this car has plenty of it. I mean, there's acres of room in here. I can even hear echo as I speak. And of course, you've also got these cool compartments like this. So your groceries don't move around. And this little compartment here, there's space for at least two small bags in there. Awesome. Now, you know, Volvo has been doing the estate thing for many years and they tried to make it a little more sexy in the 90s by entering their wagon into the BTCC, but that doesn't seem to have impacted sales in our market anyway. Still, we will be getting the Volvo V90 Cross Country, which is slightly more rugged with a, a greater ride height and all the rest. And that could be an interesting compromise for people who find the XC90 a bit too intimidating. <music> 